Talk line on Metro News. Uh, let me go to Kent Leonhardt, State Ag Commissioner. Kent, good morning, sir. How are you? I'm fine, Hoppy. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. Let's go over a couple of things that you might have some insights on. We've heard uh, a fair amount lately about concerns about the supply chain with food and, in particular, meats. Uh, any evidence of that in West Virginia? Do you know anything about that in West Virginia? Well, actually, from that, that would originate in West Virginia. We're not having a problem. This, the product that originates out for West Virginia, out of West Virginia, we're having a little bit of an issue. Uh, the last I saw was beef nationally is down 10% and pork about 25%. Uh, the biggest problem is, you know, most of the, the food chain was based on what we consumed in the grocery stores and what people were consuming in restaurants, and they were different supply chains. Well, with the restaurants all closing, the supply chain has changed, uh, and the farmers have this excess for the restaurants, and it, and they're trying to reroute it into the grocery stores. So that's the biggest challenge. Uh, so there's not really a shortage of the food at this point in time, but it's a supply chain. And hopefully as these states start opening up and people get over the virus, uh, these issues are going to resolve themselves. Uh as things like milk, we had uh, talking with our one uh, pro major processor when they lifted the restrictions on uh, highway limits, uh, on weight limits, uh, we were able to bring raw milk in from other states, more in to the state of West Virginia to increase the processing. That helped stop some of the waste, but we haven't had any problem with waste within West Virginia. Uh, West, so Virginia we're, is, we're uh, can, well. West Virginia is a uh, significant poultry producer uh, in the eastern Panhandle in particular. Any issues with any of the poultry facilities in West Virginia that you know of? Uh, no, the only problem they're having is finding a market for some of the uh, the product that they sell, and uh, they're trying to get that out right now. But uh, our biggest uh, processor in the state has all the intentions of keeping running. They got plans in place, and our poultry uh, our poultry program is going pretty well, and our farmers seem to be doing okay at this point. How about food banks? Uh, we, we have heard anecdotally that food banks, there's a greater demand on food banks. Uh, I've heard about people stepping up with contributions. Any insight on food banks? Well, food banks uh, are doing, uh, you're right, Poppy, they're very, they're very busy, they're slammed. One of the biggest issues the food banks are having right now is volunteerism is, is, slowing, is slowing down. We if I can encourage folks out there to get to your local pantry or the food bank and volunteer, uh, they need they need our help. That's the biggest issue. With the increased demand, they need more help getting the food out there to people. We have the food. Uh, it just goes up and down as to what's available. So we have food. We just need to have the manpower to get it out there. Yeah. And I'm glad that we were proactive in the previous legislation to get that trade mitigation food into West Virginia, and, the legis and we got the legislature to provide money for the transportation of that, and that has been a huge help, but there's still a lot more work to do, but the food's there, we just need help to get it out. And food inspections are normal? Uh, for the most part, food inspections are normal. We're not doing some of the, the uh, voluntary FDA ones uh, that we are cooperating with, uh, and, you know, we contract with the FDA to do some of the inspections. So some of the voluntary inspections have, uh, we've backed off of those. If there's a, a potential outbreak, we go ahead and we start working on those. Uh, other things like our normal dairy inspections, that's all going on uh, as normal. And our meat inspection process. Our meat processors are pretty well uh, busy uh, right now uh, because local demand uh well, because of the shortage that people are seeing, they're asking for more local meat. And I think that's a good thing as we, so we can learn in the future and help our West Virginia farmers. We want to make sure that we start to continue to grow. And we were growing the local food economy, 
we want to make sure, even when this is over, that we continue to grow because it's food safety and food security. Uh, speaking of locally grown food, and State Ag Commissioner Kent Leonhardt is with us, farmers' markets are extremely popular. The governor has said that they are essential, but some local health departments have actually shut them down to stop people from congregating. So where are we on farmers' markets and on local markets? Well, I think we've got most of those issues resolved, Hoppy, and the farmers' markets are open. You know, early on, I talked to the governor about making sure we kept the farmers' markets open, and uh, he agreed, and we put out guidance to the farmers' markets, and sometimes it's taken uh, one-on-one -on -one conversations uh, with the local health departments to get things moving. And some of them have restricted certain items that can't be in there because they say they don't have an inspector to, to do the cooler of meat. Well, the Department of Agriculture can inspect the, uh, the meat coolers and things of that nature. So uh, there's a little bit of the legislation uh, that we're probably going to have to fix come next session to clarify these uh, rules so that there's one voice coming out of the state for all the farmers' markets. Because a lot of our farmers, they go to multiple markets. They don't just work out of one market. So we need to have some consistency there. But we'll get there. Back to uh, locally produced uh, meats, vegetables, fruits, etc. Uh, a lot of, or a number of restaurants in West Virginia are trying to employ farm to table, but there's no table <laughs> except to, to go. Uh, the impact on restaurants through all this. Yeah, the, the restaurants have, have been uh, have made things a little bit difficult. We've gotten calls. We actually, if you go to our website, we have a COVID-19 uh, section at the Department of Agriculture, and we have a list of uh, producers and, uh, and people that need things. So uh, that's on our website. Uh, folks are looking for uh, certain products. They can go there and see what's available uh, from our local farms. Agriculture Secretary Kent Leonhardt is with us. Kent, West Virginia is a fair and festival heavy state starting probably about now or certainly in May. What is, what's going to happen to those? Well, that's, that's a good question. Yeah, we already, uh, the strawberry festival for early May was already canceled. And I think a lot of the fairs and festivals, and I've been in discussion with the state fair, obviously, because we're involved in there. And they're hanging on, but hopefully that we're going to have a state fair. Uh, everything, you know, certain some of these things like the entertainment and uh, some of the, the carnival rides, they all have drop dead dates and fair boards are going to have to make a decision on whether they want to, on when they can cancel a fair or not. It's going to have an economic impact uh, on some of the local communities. And, and I feel for our youth yeah. that have uh, put so much effort into their their uh, project, uh, their, their 4-H and FFA projects. They're not going to be able to showcase uh, those things possibly this year. So the later your fair festival is, the better chance you are, obviously, of having a, a shot at being open. But the earlier ones, they're really struggling. Yeah, and you make a great point about the FFA and 4-H projects because hundreds, maybe thousands of kids in West Virginia, of young people who belong to these organizations, go raise a calf or a hog or something, lamb, and then they take it to the fair and they show it, and then they sell it. And it's, uh, it's, it's a combination, those who buy it, it's a combination of uh, getting the animal and the meat, but also of supporting a local organization. And then that money goes to that kid and they use it for whatever. And now that's, a lot of that's in jeopardy, Ken. That, that's in jeopardy, you're right. And I know a lot of the uh, local clubs are working on trying to set up uh, – tele-auctions and things of that nature. So we'll do whatever we can at the department to support that. Obviously, 4-H is run by uh, WVU Extension, and the FFA is run by the Department of Education. But uh, those organizations know that the Department of Agriculture is uh, here to help, particularly with the uh, animal health issues and things of that nature, to make sure that these things can go off. But how, how, are, how, are li how are livestock markets working, if they're working at all? Well, uh, so far, our livestock markets, we've been able to keep those open. Uh, again, just like we did with the farmer's market, we put out guidance to the uh, livestock market owners. Uh, normally, you would go there to a market and you would see not only the buyers and the sellers, but you'd also see a lot of people that just go there to socialize and see what's going on. 
the coffee shops within the markets are, are closed. Uh, the chairs are upside down. They can't go in and, and socialize there. So the markets have had to limit the number of people that go in the barns. They're practicing social distancing. But our markets are still in operation, and we're keeping the ag industry in West Virginia moving. Um, I'm very proud of that. My staff, I've got to give them a shout-out. Poppy, they've just been tremendous through all this. Uh, they've had to adjust. They've had to change. Most of the office-type folks were working from home. Uh, we go, they go into office only when they have to do something that can't be done at home. Uh, they're practicing the social distancing. The field folks are out there. They're just doing a, a tremendous job. And, you know, I'm glad to get a public shout-out to them all because they're just uh, – I'm proud of each and every one of them. Uh, they've kept ag moving in West Virginia during this crisis, and uh, we haven't really missed too much of a beat. And uh, so far, knock on wood, we haven't had any uh, illnesses in the industry that we know of. State Ag Commissioner Kent Leonhardt. Kent, thank you. Appreciate the update, and we'll talk again soon. Thank you very much. Anytime, Hoppy. Thank you very much. All right.